Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic, host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we have Sean Booth um, uh, with a new podcast. It's called In the Booth with Sean Booth. <laughs> I like it. Not bad. Of course, he was on The Bachelorette. He was the finalist, the winner of Caitlin Bristow season. They got engaged and then broke up. And, of course, he's been slightly critical of the way Caitlin has discussed him in the, in her past because, of course, she discusses her own relationships and therapy and things like that on her podcast, rightfully so, on Off the Vine. Uh, but now Sean has a podcast, so he's going to get to see what it's like to need to drive content by using your bachelor name. I mean, that's exactly what has to happen. Follow me on Instagram at Neals. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal for behind-the-scenes bonus content. And every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast. On today's Bachelor Rush Hour, which I already have out, I discuss my or the Fan Appreciation Weekend for Reality Steve. Every year he does a Fan Appreciation Weekend in Vegas, and it was surprising to say the least. I got to meet Courtney Robertson and her lovely husband and a bunch of other amazing people. I'll give you the details of Fan Appreciation Weekend on today's Bachelor Rush Hour podcast. Go check it out there. All right, and I know you think, oh, Dave, you make these videos with no edits. You're so perfect with the way you make your content. Well, no, that's not the case. Here is me moments ago go completely messing up the um the uh thumbnail here hello everybody it's dave neal stand-up comic host of bachelor nation news and oh i spelled sean wrong idiot <laughs> so there idiot come on you dumb so anyway that's that all right let's get into the story so as we know a few weeks ago uh there was these clickbait headlines that came out that said caitlin bristow says she feels like ex-fiance sean booth used her professionally by the way how funny is it when journalism uh, uh, now is like paraphrasing and then using quotes and then paraphrasing and then it's like literally piecemeal together like a, a crazy stalker would send a harassment letter right anyway she said it felt like he was hanging on until his gym opened, the former bachelor told her fiance Jason Tartik on the latest episode of his Trading Secrets podcast. So this became big news because what Caitlin had ended up saying was she was like, look, I know it might sound bad, but I understand. Why would he break up with me when he's trying to release his business? You know, you know, whatever. It wasn't really said in, in, in a real negative connotation. Uh, I discuss this topic right here on Caitlin Bristow's podcast, Off the Vine. That's right. I did Off the Vine and I believe it comes out tomorrow, Tuesday. So one once that comes out, I'm going to reintroduce this topic and we'll discuss this more. I bring this up because his new podcast, In the Booth with Sean Booth, discusses his time on The Bachelorette. Now, will he get into the nitty gritty about his season? Uh, my, my thought for Jason is... I'm sorry, for Sean, not Jason. My thought for Sean is he should discuss it. You were a part of a wild season on The Bachelorette involving Nick Vial, Caitlin Bristow, some of the biggest names in podcasting. Enter the conversation and share your side of the story. That's okay. They shared theirs. You can share yours. It'll only help your podcast unless, you know, you, of course, you come up horribly. But I think, I think uh, you know, a few years past a relationship, he can come at it in a level-headed way. Let's have have a listen to his time on The Bachelorette and how producers manipulated him. Hangover I had, I was when I was on uh, ABC's The Bachelorette little reality show, we went on a date to the Guinness factory. Been there. Sat down on a table like this, but there was it was a massive table and they just had pints of Guinness. I don't know if you've ever had Guinness in Ireland. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is the absolute best tasting beer you can get. Did you get your face printed on it? I didn't. They no, didn't do that. Didn't. That yeah. was cool. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. Um, and that was a rough night. There were some cameramen that said that they saw me drink 18 Guinnesses. <laughs> um, not only that, I'm not but here to confirm or deny. Not, that's just the rumor. Can't confirm or deny that. There right, were so so he, he drank a ton of Guinness, he said. And I, I've always heard that while Guinness looks super thick, uh, and, it, and it might be, that it's actually pretty healthy. Is Guinness really good for you? Uh, Guinness, like other Irish stouts, enjoys a seasonal popularity every St. Patrick's Day. has been touted as being good for you, at least by its own advertising posters decades ago. I mean, yes, we also said smoking was good for you. Um, anyway, so I guess it's got to, some... Uh, it's uh, You wouldn't rank it as healthy, health, healthful as a vegetable. Stout, in general, as well as other beers, 
may be justified in at least some of their nutritional bragging rights. All right, so there, oh, it's got folate, a, a B vitamin. Don't they say folate is good for getting pregnant? Okay, so maybe that's what you should do. Drink Guinness to get pregnant. Don't drink Guinness once you are pregnant. Once you have a two-year-old brat that you didn't train well and he's yapping all the time, then start drinking Guinness again. I'm kidding. Um, five of us guys, and it was a group date. Mm -hmm. And this is like, they play sh games with you on the show so bad. They'll mess with your head so bad. And Bingo. Um, I was waiting my turn to get my time with Caitlin. And I'm, I mean, I'm sitting there for hours and everybody's getting like an hour, an hour and a half. All right, so he did say Caitlin's name. I think it's important to note there because, of course, you know, Caitlin said his name. and Oh, she only talks about you. Well, they can talk about each other. They're exes. And then, like, I finally get my time with her and they give us, like, not even 10 minutes. Jesus. Like, On purpose? Yeah. They oh, just, okay. like, mess with you. Like, if they see somebody who's got a good connection, they're like, we're going to do whatever we can to, fuck that to up. try and build up the other relationships and try and kind of mess this one up. Okay. And she was like, I'm saving a spot for us at the top of the factory it's like this rotating room you can see the whole city she's like i'm gonna save that spot for us and then she got me she's like all right let's go and we start walking up there the producer was like no no sorry you guys can't go up there it's closed for the night we're like whatever They're like you have to sit right here it's like we sit there at this little table had 10 minutes with her go back down sitting on this table with all the beers i start drinking another guy he goes on a date and then he comes back two hours later Jesus. and i was like uh, he's like, man, it was awesome. I, I went to I, the, the rotating room. I went room. to the rotating room at the top of the factory. What? And I was like, motherfucker. I'm like, these fuckers. So then you. So he knew in the moment it was a war zone out there. And as we know, after we watched Caitlin Bristow's season of The Bachelor, and of course, Caitlin Bristow, host of Off the Vine podcast and creator of the Spade and Sparrow wine label, and she has a scrunchie company. But uh, we, we've seen uh, how horrible this season was. For Sean, I mean, don't get me wrong, Caitlin was put in an untenable position. She was completely slut-shamed and treated horribly. Well, that is for sure. Separately, Sean and Nick, they had one of the biggest rivalries I think we've ever seen on the show. I don't know if there's a bigger rivalry and a bigger hatred between the winner and the runner-up that we've ever seen. Usually, I think when you come out of it, people be, be, act a certain way. But I have to say, viscerally speaking, I could see Sean Booth in that torment he felt because in what world would you be about to you know get engaged to someone and they're and they're you know still contemplating uh hooking up with somebody else i don't blame caitlin bristol for that either i just say the position that all of these people were put in is just not something i would ever want to wish on my worst enemy you start, started so i was drinking, drinking yeah. like, and i was drinking and then um i remember i was so upset wait that's so messed up messed up i that's Whatever. Yeah. That's besides the point. ADD. Keep going. By the way, is <laughs> Sean, so did Sean do this on purpose? His set design is identical to Between Two Ferns, which is like a fictitious show where Zach Galifianakis interviews famous people, Between Two Ferns. Uh, it's a hilarious show, but uh, it's it's like scripted and improvised. He had Obama and Matthew McConaughey and so many people. But my question is, I, I, again, I don't hate it. I don't know if this counts as a fern or whatever you know tree this is. But um, as far as audio and video go for Sean, and especially for a new podcast, I'm going to go ahead and give it an A. A plus I would reserve if there was better backlighting and other graphics going on. But I'm giving it a solid A as far as the crispness, high quality video, high quality audio. Congratulations. A plus Sean Booth. Dream drinking all night and then i get like back to the hotel and they could tell i was upset they're like do you want to go see caitlin i'm like yeah i want to go see caitlin oh god that's <laughs> I'm like yeah where's her room and then <laughs> they bring me up to their room and i remember like and this is like i've been drinking all day not only guinness but we were at like in dublin drinking whiskey and with harrison and all this stuff so you're talking about one or two in the morning and basically, yeah, yeah, I was like this with one eye open. And then I just like vaguely remember that like cameras following me down the hallway. And then like I knock on her door <laughs> and it's like she's sitting there and then she opens the door and she's like in her pajamas. <laughs> like she took off all of her makeup and she's like eating meatballs. She's got like meatball <laughs> in her teeth, not expecting anybody to come up. And I'm like, hey, can I talk to you? <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> yeah. No. Like, what? And they sit us down on this couch. And I remember the producer was telling me, he's like, you better tell her this. And I'm like, I'm not going to tell her that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to tell her that. And then 
I would sit down on the couch and I was like staring at her, like trying to focus on her. And I was like trying to whisper to her because the cameras were behind me. And I was like, I don't want to be here. You're making me do this. <laughs> and then um, they're like yelling at me. They put me in the hallway. Like, you better tell her this. And I'm like, and I go What back. is this, the military? Yeah, Jesus. pretty much. And I go back in and I was like, uh, yeah, so I just, you know, I don't know why you did this or that. And then I was like, but I'm not saying this. <laughs> yeah. And like I was turning my head. I love, I love hearing the producer laughing in the background. Good vibes here. This is a good conversation. Which, you know, you go watch the show, you go, oh, Sean was so demanding, so controlling. They, they put you in these positions where you feel like you have to behave. And, and, and if you don't behave, then you might not get the one-on-one -on -one coming after. I mean, it's total cult 101. She's like, what is going on? <laughs> this is so outrageous. And so then, whatever. I can't even remember the rest of the conversation. I go back downstairs. Next morning, I wake up and I got uh, Ben Higgins, who's like the best dude in the world. He's in the bed next to me. And I wake up out of sheer panic, like, dude. What just happened? I'm like, I think I went up to Caitlin's room last night. He's like, oh, you did, He's buddy. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much like, oh, yeah, you did. And I'm like. With cameras and everything. With cameras and everything. huh? He's like, yeah. And so I'm panicking big time because I don't remember. Like, That's where your anxiety that. started. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to make it so that you have to go to his YouTube to check out the rest of this video. As you guys know, we like to share clips, but really promote the channel. Whether you like Sean or not, I really think he's really good at storytelling. I think he's doing a really, really good job here. That is my... Uh, I've never met Sean. I know nothing about him other than what we've seen on the show. I like this. I like this show for him. I like that he's telling these stories. Do me a favor. If you do go check out his content, tell him that you heard it. Leave a comment there on his video that you heard him and uh, featured on my channel because I want him to know that we're not ripping off his content but supporting it. So he, uh, this was only episode three. My guess is, and Sean, if I could give you any advice... Listen to what Caitlin has said about you. Don't listen to the clickbait, you know, news headlines, but listen to what she said. And if you feel like responding, just respond. I mean, I know, I know and again, this, this might sound toxic, but that's what creates a lot of um, viewership is you being able to define your story and tell it. And it might be slightly different than the way she saw things, but it might lead to you guys doing like a joint podcast together and overcoming whatever grief or despair or shame or whatever lost love that you feel on the inside it could be good therapy that's that's just me the middle brother here saying i'd love to see you guys on a podcast wouldn't you out there let me know what you all think you can go check this out uh sean booth's new podcast in the booth with sean booth oh look at that i'll hit subscribe right now so we'll be covering his podcast along with nick files caitlin bristos and all the other podcast trading secrets all the other podcasts in bachelor nation as we do all right well don't forget i've got some unique content for you right now on bachelor rush hour the podcast it's available i've already uploaded it for your Monday. I'll be uh, flying to New York tonight. So if you want to catch my live stand-up show tomorrow, 7 p.m. New York Comedy Club, link in the comment section for tickets. And we'll talk to you later.